A question I get a lot is how I did my uh, electric electric actuator conversion uh, on my skid steer plate for my 4066R. So if you look back in my videos, and I, I've been asked this by a number of people, and I've tried to explain it, but I've never successfully explained it, I don't think, in an email or a message or anything like that. And this video basically serves to kind of wrap up the project. I'm going to talk about some of the modifications I had to make and at the same time uh, some of the challenges with doing this project. So originally this machine, the skid steer option, only comes with the traditional manual uh, skid steer locks uh, for the machine. So there are black handles that come out and you have to lift them up. So it requires you to get out of the tractor. Not necessarily a big deal most of the time. However, in muddy environments or um, you know, in my particular case, trying to switch back and forth between a bucket and a snow pusher, things along those lines are my forks in my bucket. Um, the time isn't necessarily a factor, but I I'm not really all that thrilled to get out in the middle of a snowstorm and be changing attachments. Uh, instead, I prefer just to sit in the cab and do it. So what I set about doing is I noticed that the John Deere skid steers have uh, skid steer plates, obviously, and they have an electric actuator kit that you can use on the uh, skid steers. So I bought one of those kits thinking that even though it wasn't listed for the skid steer carrier for the uh, what would be the H180, I believe this is a H180 loader, um, now it would be the 440R I believe. Um, so, it, but it didn't work. Um, the electric actuator that comes in the John Deere kits is not appropriate for, uh, it's too long for the width between the skid steer carrier on uh, these uh, loaders for the 4066, or the four series or the three series, I guess, for that matter, because uh, they're all the same width. So what I had to do um, is I actually kept the red, the red handles are out of that skid steer kit, as are the pins. However, I had to make a modification to the pins here. You have to flatten one side of the pin, which is not ideal, but you can't get them past these ears on this uh, on these uh, tabs there, or the lift pins, whatever you're gonna call them. You can't get those pins past there unless you flatten them out. So that is just something you have to do. You have to live with it. You can see that there is a gap there where I flatten those pins out. My electric actuator is from Progressive Automation. Um, I've tried to find the sheet with the lengths for, uh, for it. Progressive Automation is actually the company that makes the electric actuators for deer. Uh, it is an IP67 rated electric actuator. Uh, deer rates their actuator to 1,000 pounds. This one right here will do 3,000 pounds uh, because I get, I, I think that it's, it looks the same as deer, so I'm guessing there's some limit switches in there. My guess is the, the, the power, so the 3,000 pounds versus 1,000 pounds, is due to electric power needed. Now, one interesting thing is the electric actuator that comes from, uh, let me think here. The electric actuator that comes from Deer has uh, the weather pack connector on it, like that right there. Meanwhile, the electric actuator that comes from Progressive Automation has a very different connector. So you do have to replace the connector, which requires you to open the electric actuator up, but you need to get it resealed. Uh, so that is just one thing. Uh, keep in mind this actuator can pull 20 amps. So you do need to, I believe I ran 10 gauge wire uh, for this application. Granted, I never expect to pull a full 20 amps on this electric actuator, but that's what it does pull. And so what I've done is I used the, Red, these red handles came with that skid steer kit. You can look up, say, a John Deere 332 skid steer, and you can look at the electric actuator kit for it, and that should have everything that you need. Uh, at the same time, uh, the electric here, it's all 10 gauge, it's all wrapped in um, various forms of cover in some shape or form. In this particular case, we actually did leave some extra there, and I, I'm glad we did because I've had some problems with that weather pack connector down there. You need a weather pack connector kit. That makes it much easier to service these things. 
Uh, if you don't know what a weather pack, pack connector is, um, they're basically the weatherproof fittings for electrical stuff. Uh, they're not the traditional uh, just plug and play. So basically what we've done is we've routed with the, with the hydraulic lines and everything. You can see this right here. We've routed it to here, another uh, weather pack connector. That way you can take the loader off and also at the same time unhook the uh, quick attach system. Now what we did is up underneath here, which I'm, let's see here. So right there is a main bus panel or a main bus for the 4066. So what we've done is we've run the main power right here. There is an inline fuse. Is, I believe that's a 15 amp fuse in there that we, that we installed. That way we're not overloading the system. I'd rather the fuse go than anything else. Uh, it has blown a couple times. So that is a uh, 15 amp fuse. It's in there. Uh, it's in line with the power supply to the actuator. Now, to control the actuator, and this is where I had a friend helping me. Um, and so he did a lot of this part of the wiring. I did a lot of the kind of design work on um, the installing the actual actuator things along those lines. What we have is we drilled a hole in the floor of the cab. I don't want to take this mat completely up, but basically you can see it goes through the floor right there. We have wrapped it around. So we did go ahead and cut out part of the floor mat for it. So it wraps around on the floor mat right there. And then basically it goes up and then it wraps and goes. We had to cut out this right here and the control actually runs up into here. Underneath this panel right here is two relays. Those two relays go to this switch right here. This is the rocker switch. This switch is out of a uh, 344K loader uh, from John Deere. It is the rocker switch that they use for the quick attach for that 344K. Um, so it's a little bit different looking switch than anything else, but that is the switch that controls it. I, we actually have it, uh, we accidentally connected it backwards. Um, it is extre it's extremely tight in here, so there's two relays. Uh, I'm trying to think of the part numbers for the relays. Uh, they're, they're just very common, uh, simple relays. You can actually look on the parts diagram for the 344K and you can get those relays in, uh, in there. Uh, you can order them from Deer. I think they're like 20 bucks a piece. And uh, honestly, you can probably go get any relay. Um, so then from there to power this switch right here, since you don't want all that power running through the switch, I need to go around the other side of the tractor and pull the seat forward. And we'll show you how we power all of that. And as I said, I am not a electrician, so it's extremely difficult for me to explain how to do the wire, the relays, etc. cetera. Uh, that is not something that I did working on this project. Like I said, I had a friend helping me do that. So what we have, and you can ignore this relay in the back because that is actually for some lights. Um, but we have just a mini uh, bus bar back here. Uh, that bus bar, uh, basically the power comes in. I believe we use the 12 volt, yeah, we use the 12 volt power from the seat to power that, um, that bus right there. And then that is what provides the power to the switch. Um, this, there was one hole already there and I think we had to make the other hole there. And that is how we uh, power the switch, which powers the electric actuator. Um, now, obviously this is a couple of the things that I did not consider when I did this project is, or when, before I got started on this project, uh, it seems relatively straightforward. Um, but one of the big things is power supply. Uh, this electric actuator does eat a lot of power. Um, so if you're gonna do numerous cycles, that is something to take into consideration. I'm gonna make sure you're running the machine. Also the fact that all this is DC, so uh, you're gonna have to run some pretty substantial wires. Like I said, I mean, we've got uh, 10 gauge running up here, so you're gonna need probably 50 feet or more of 10 gauge wire. 
total cost, um, I think the, the electric actuator, when I bought it three or four years ago, uh, I guess I bought it in late 2017, early 2018, that electric actuator was about 500 bucks. Uh, now I expect it's gone up in price. Um, between the, the tabs and everything and all the electronics and the switch and everything else, um, I want to say I have right at $1,100 in doing the skid steer conversion. You can probably do it cheaper. Uh, also, at the same time, one of the things I did consider was doing a hydraulic uh, conversion. So using the hydraulics for the third, the third, um, third function and basically just running a hydraulic cylinder up here and using uh, the two, the same... Uh, Kit, the same arms or really latches, I guess you'd call them, uh, for the the electric actuator. Um, I don't know which one would work better. This kit has worked really well. Uh, about the biggest complaint I have is the fact that these two skid steer plates are not synchronized. I do need to run some type of uh, metal in between them to get the plates kind of better together, uh, but that's something I can do at a later date. I've been meaning to do that for two years now. So hopefully that answers some questions on how to do the uh, skid steer electric actuator conversion on the four series. Uh, like I said, some folks opted for hydraulic. Uh, in this particular case, I just used an electric actuator. Um, it was a little bit easier to run and then you're not having to worry about if you do have, uh, I can still use my third function and it's not something that I'm necessarily worried about. I'm not gonna inadvertently hit the switch, things along those lines. Uh, this third function up here, you have to remember that it is on the joystick of the controller. And so, I mean, just operating the, the front end loader, you can inadvertently hit this joystick and these controls right here. And uh, you would definitely be in a world of hurt if you dropped the, uh, if you dropped the uh, implement off of the tractor. So hopefully that answers some questions. If you have questions, comments, leave them below. Um, this is the way I did my system. There's other ways to do it, uh, but definitely consider uh, some of, just some of the factors to consider, uh, or I, hopefully I've covered them in this video. So thanks for watching.